like and subscribe right now, or else this will be in your bed tonight. r slash ask reddit by planet reddit. What is normal in your country but seems weird to the rest of the world? Golden gay time. Okay, you're going to have to explain. It is an ice cream in Australia, called golden gay time as in golden happy time. It is pretty delish. Calling a traffic light a robot. South Africa? I moved to Namibia from Canada years ago and people kept saying just head to the top of the hill and turn left at the robots. It took me about 3 months to stop looking for weird robot signs or statues. Cause that's what I figured they were getting at. Having spaghetti in McDonald's. Men holding hands in public as a display of friendship is normal in Afghanistan but super weird in the west. I think it's normal in most of the Middle East and India. I've had people hold my hand and put a hand on my inner thigh while explaining the evils of the gay, in Uganda. Hurting cable ties, branches, fake eyes etc on helmets, buckets and hats in springtime to scare away the birds, magpies are vicious bastards. Bribing them with fairy bread works sometimes I. Hurting broken glass bottles on the walls around your house so burglars can't jump it and rob you. I moved to Canada and they don't even have walls around the houses. All of Latin America. Yup, Chile has neighborhoods with fences like these described. Whole restaurants cheering when a plate or glass is smashed UK. Once was in a Canadian bar slash restaurant on holiday and a waiter dropped a tray of glasses. The local looked horrified when I was out of my seat screaming we I I I I I. I'm Canadian, would be horrified ha ha. I feel as if this is one of those things where you're horrified when sober, but would join in in a heartbeat when drunk. Edit. In Canada. Blood pudding and fermented fish. Finland? Sweden? Our wildlife is not trying to kill us. Edit. Magpies accepted. I'm fairly sure geese are at the very least plotting. It's funny, because I used to work with a bunch of Australians, and people would ask about their wildlife trying to kill them. When it got to the point where they'd become visibly irritated, I'd take the attention away by informing the group of all the things actually harmful in Arizona. I wish we would have made a game of Australia or Arizona. Eating with our hands. In 1969, the same year the man landed on the moon. Miss Gloria Diaz coveted the Philippines' first Miss Universe crown. During the preliminary Q&A, she was asked is it true that you Filipinos use your hand when you eat? To which she replied why? Do you use your feet? And went her way to winning the crown. Edit. Removed misleading link. Edit 2. Shout out to Indian commenters who eat with their hands. 2. And people from other Southeast Asian countries and the Middle East. This isn't limited to the Philippines. People, especially those of Indian descent, eat with their hands in Malaysia, and it's also extremely common in Saudi Arabia as well. The cracks that are just wide enough to be able to see in and out of public restroom stalls. United States, I've heard it's thought of as weird since men in other countries enjoy the luxury of privacy. My senior year of high school was the year the school finally installed doors on the bathroom stalls. It was 2007. Tax not included in advertised price. Yep, I find this so weird. I could never get used to this when I lived in Ontario. I'm British. Dreaded each trip to the checkout because I'd never quite know how much I'd be spending. When I was 13 I went on an exchange program to Finland to stay with the family there. First night get invited to join the family in their sauna. That was an eye-opening experience. Vegemite. Leaving your baby alone outside for their nap. Even if it rains or snows. Reminds me of a beautiful comment I read a while ago about this subject by you slash My daughter was born in Copenhagen, Denmark. Frederiksberg actually. We lived there for a few years after she was born. We learned from our Danish friends to let her sleep outside in the back garden of our flat in her pram during snowfalls. We kept an eye on her from the window. It was very soothing to her, and she would sleep very soundly. Sometimes when we would go out to check on her we would find her awake but quiet, just watching the snow falling around her. Some of my fondest memories of her time as a baby, followed by, it's such a pure experience of love that it makes my heart ache to recall it. 
That was almost 18 years ago but I still have crystal clear memories of her lying in the pram with snowflakes falling all around her little face. She would turn her head and smile at me for a moment and go back to looking up at the snow. I will never forget it. Reddit.com link. This is also the normal thing to do in Denmark. All midday naps are outside in a pram. Same if you are at a cafe. It's quite normal to leave your child outside in their pram. As long as you can see them. A short while ago they stopped selling alcohol after 10 p.m. At some stores you couldn't even get non-alcoholic beer. What's weird though is that wine is not considered alcoholic drink so you can buy it anytime. Welcome to Moldova. Ro. Such gold. Much thanks. In certain US states you can't buy any alcohol. In stores. After 8 p.m. or on Sundays. Georgia the US state. Just revise the law to allow alcohol purchases in grocery stores only after 12.30 p.m. on Sundays. In restaurants. Only after 11 a.m. on Sundays. It used to be not long ago no purchases on Sundays in the state. Heck. Even some counties are still dry counties where you can't buy alcohol at all any time. Marrying someone without knowing them and only seeing their face once the marriage is agreed on. Dunt is a term of endearment. Context dependent. Don't text. Bag milk. I know it's normal in some places but not here in the UK. Interestingly, businesses must have caught up with it as every single costume I've been to has milk in bags. We tried it in my elementary school in the US for a while. It was a common trick to say your chocolate milk busted because you put the straw too far and get another one. It didn't last long. In university we thumped the tables to applaud our professors. Instead of actually applauding, or doing nothing. During my exchange semester everyone not from Germany was looking at me confused why I did this. In my country we don't applaud our professors. At least not in the one I go to. It has only happened once. When the lecture was especially interesting and professionally done. In my experience it's done for guest lecturers. Or at the end of the last lecture of the term. Definitely not at the end of every regular lecture though. We have matrimonial ads in newspapers and sites to find grooms and brides which I think don't happen in western countries and they find it strange. The ads are mostly published by parents. It's like Tinder supervised by parents. India? Tindia. Strangers sitting totally naked skin to skin in a steamy room heated to plus 80 to plus 100 C. And as having competitions on who can last the longest in there. And as a consequence of that, having seen 90% of my friends naked, regardless of gender. Also co-workers. In my friend's country, Easter is when gangs of boys roam the countryside, pouring water over girls and beating them gently, with sticks. The girls then have to thank them for it. I thought that was pretty weird. Edit. She's from Slovakia. Some random drunk old guy hit my ass with a stick in Prague on Easter two years ago. That explains it. Zechia and Slovakia who ho. Also it supposes to keep women and girls young and healthy. In the Philippines, it would be people living with their parents. Everybody I know whose parents homes are in the city choose to live there. With the relatively low wage to cost of living ratio, it is not unusual for married couples to share houses with their in-laws. I work remote and I still live with my parents and pay zero rent. Of course, I pay all the bills. Feed them and do all the home repairs and chores. Calling mixed race people coloreds. I'm from South Africa and I am colored but when I went on holiday in Spain. Colored is a derogatory term but in South Africa it's completely normal. Eating biscuits and gravy. I traveled to the UK and told them that biscuits and gravy is a very common breakfast food and as you would expect they were highly confused. Biscuit equals cookie across the pond. Why we would take something sweet and cover it in gravy. And also was confused that the gravy we use has sausage in it and is white. Legal drinking age of beer and wine is 16. Join our community discord. Link in description. Everyone rags on the US for using imperial. But can we talk for a second about how weird we are here in the UK for using both inconsistently? You buy a pint of milk or beer. But a liter of coke and 25 milliliters of whiskey. People know how many miles to the gallon their cars get, but you buy fuel at pence per liter. You watch the weather forecast and the temperature is in celsius but the wind speed is in miles per hour. Most people can tell you their weight in kilograms, and their height in feet. 
And if they can't give you kilograms they can probably give you stone instead. Which is even older than pounds. Which nobody uses as a unit of measurement. Probably because of the confusion between LBS and pound symbol. It's a glorious mess. Canada has this same problem. Distance is measured in metric but height and weight is in imperial. There are lots of other cases. Distance is measured in time. Washing your butthole after taking a crap. Chow can sit at dinner with Tilico. I'm trying to bring this worldwide. Putting chips in our burgers. Edit. I'm referring to the British version fries in America but fatter. I know it isn't the same, but we are occasionally known to line up french fries in our burgers here too. Which kind of chips? It's a moot question really because I've eaten both crisps and chips in a burger before. Pregnancy is a wild beast. Edit. I should specify I meant both at the same time. I wanted as much crunch and potato as possible with that sweet cheesy meatiness. Drinking beer before 12 o'clock and seeing it as part of the culture. Australia? My Aussie flatmate always used to say 1 before 10 or 10 before 1. UK too. No judgement. Being middle class with a property having a 6 feet wall. Electric fencing linked to an alarm. Automated gate and garage doors. With security clamps over the gate motor to prevent theft of the motor. Security gates over every door. Burglar bars. And a house alarm system with infrared sensors linked to armed response with a reaction time of under 3-4 minutes. South Africa? Yep. Being left off of maps. Pua? Tasmanians also got the shit end of that stick. At times. In my country you bike everywhere. Cause aren't used much. For longer distances you mostly use train and public transport. Also being 6 foot is normal. Yep. Your capital city has more bikes than people living there like WTF. The bikes tolerate the humans because they keep the water outside of the country. One day though, there'll be a rise of the bicycles. Sprinkles on buttered bread is made by fairies and is perfect for kids parties. And anything negative said about said treat is sacrilegious. A gel slag is still my favorite childhood school vacation memory. Today I learned the Netherlands and Australia share a delicious treat. Deep fried Mars bar. Edit. I'm from New Zealand. For those asking. These are usually sold in fish and chip shops. And Oreos. And cheesecake. And butter. And beer. And Snickers. Edit. Sorry to say guys. But I'm not from NZ. I'm from Texas. A barista in Acosta years ago spent far too long telling me about the sheer joy that is a deep fried creme egg. I hadn't asked. He was just really passionate about them. I don't know why but teenagers from my place, Vietnam, like to put hot sauce on everything. Like pizzas, chips, french fries, spaghetti, rice, cakes, hamburgers, anything you can think of. My husband was Vietnamese this whole time. Cheese curds and gravy over fries. Canada isn't real. A magical land covered in Christmas where everyone is nice and syrup literally falls from the trees. Like that's a real place. Nobody eats cheese curds, fries and gravy. Don't be pouting these vicious rumors about, lol. Having a garbage can in the bathroom for use toilet paper. That's actually really common in a lot of countries. A lot of sewer systems can't handle toilet paper. Yup, and it's something that can happen on a building by building basis. 1840s house made into a pub, paper bin. Because the old pipes can't handle the paper. Modern office building next door. Plumbing designed for 50 blokes pooping on company time. Calling them all chips. Not crisps. Hot chips or anything else. Just chips. Except you wedges you can have a different name. Edit. Sometimes at Mookers or Hungry Jacks and other fast food places call them fries but duck off fast food they're chips. 90% of this entire thread is Australian New Zealand commenting. And chicken salt for chips. I'm from the USA and my girlfriend is from Singapore. The amount of pumpkin shit we consume practically frightens her. Can confirm. Wife is inhaling all the pumpkin things. Yawanak nawut, I could go for some pumpkin pie right about now. Pharmaceutical commercials. This could only be the US, right? I'm from the UK, and the idea of adverts for anything but things like over-the-counter cough medicine or other non-essential medication seems absolutely bizarre. 
Do you go to the doctors and say well I've heard about this great X medicine and I'd like to try it for my X problem. Can you write me a prescription? How does it even work? Over here I just tell the doctor my issue and they decide which medication I get. Which almost always will be a generic and branded one. I pay the £9 prescription charge and off I go. US. Nurse here. Sometimes people will come in and say. I saw a commercial for X med. Maybe that would work for me. Then the doctor will explain their ideas for what meds. If any. They think are best for their situation and why. Mostly people are just curious. They rarely are sold on any particular one just from an ad one. Also. The advertised drugs are very often not immediately covered by insurance and tend to be very expensive to the patient. The biggest issue with it is that sometimes people think they may have a certain condition the advertised med will treat because they have symptoms mentioned in the ad. Do you often feel tired, run down, and have stomach pain? Ask your doctor about. Also, the drug company will send salespeople to the doctor's offices to try and convince the doctor to use whatever new medication is coming out. Edit. Word for clarification. Men wear skirts even when it's pouring outside. Which is all the time. I loved visiting your country. Still kicking myself for never trying Einbrew. Which is supposedly amazing and the next most Scottish drink there is next to whiskey. Scottish here. We deep fry our pizzas. No even sorry. Tasty wee bastards. Marry a tree to break a curse. How do I marry a tree? I want a walnut tree in my yard to stop banging on my roof and filling my yard with its dumb green balls. But if you think you can change a tree's wayward ways with marriage, you're living in a fool's paradise. Until recently, no women drivers. Boiled coca cola with lemon and ginger. What the duck. I don't hate the idea. A teeny tiny nation with at least 50 different accents. Living with your parents is praised a lot, but getting your own place or moving with your so is still looked weird as an act. Walking around barefoot. NZ. I once saw a doctor in her office doing that. Was surprised. Bears on motorcycles driving on roads. Drinking vodka and playing balalaikas. Dot. 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 Ha ha ha. Gotcha. What I said was untrue. Russia doesn't have roads. So much damn water in the toilets. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.